Hi everyone, it's Marianne and welcome to my Wasteless Life. In this video, let's talk about everything we need to know about watering our houseplants. Thank you so much for joining me today and if you're new, this is my Wasteless Life where I take you along my plant journey and share with you some of my beginner tips and tricks on houseplants and sustainable lifestyle. Contrary to popular belief, you don't need special types of water for your plants in order for them to survive or thrive. Our tap water is perfectly fine for our houseplants, even our most finicky ones. And yes, depending on where we live, our water could be harder or contain more minerals, but that's not necessarily a bad thing for our houseplants. And if you're really concerned, I'm gonna share with you some cheap and easy ways that you could amend your tap water so that you can find it a little bit more suitable for your houseplants. Some people prefer buying distilled water for their houseplants, but distilled water is essentially boiled tap water. Yes, more accurately, it's the condensation from the steam that is turned back to liquid, but it is boiled tap water. And what does distillation really do? Distillation removes contaminants and minerals from the water. So if your issue is contaminants in the water, then boiling your tap water and then letting it cool down is just fine for your houseplants. If your concern is minerals, then distilled water will be devoid of minerals. But at the same time, it will be devoid of minerals that are very beneficial for your houseplants. And of course, access to clean water is a very important issue and a problem in many parts of the U.S., especially in Flint, Michigan, and in many parts of the world as well. So I'm not trying to minimize that. But if you live in an area where you can drink your tap water, cook with it, bathe with it, wash with it, then it's more than fine for your houseplants. Hard water is basically water with highly dissolved minerals, which are largely magnesium and calcium, which are nutrients that are great for your plants. But of course, anything of excess is also bad. That is true with any nutrients that you give your plants. If you're really concerned about mineral buildup, then the way to correct that or reset your soil is to flush your plants. But if you really want to get rid of impurities in the water that you use to water your plants and you really see a difference between using filtered water versus your regular tap water, then I suggest investing in a filter that you can attach to your faucet or buying a Brita filter. Or honestly, what I do is I repurpose my dog's water dispenser that he no longer uses anymore that has a filter in it. And that's what I use to store water and use it on my plants. But the easiest method is to recycle your plastic jugs or glass bottles, fill it up with water, let it sit at least overnight before you use it on your house plants. If you let your tap water sit overnight, this would allow the chlorine and fluoride, which is normally found in city water, to dissipate first. And the best type of water to use your house plants is rainwater. Rainwater is soft, is oxygenated, and contains minerals and nutrients that are great for your plants. I try to collect rainwater as much as I can by just putting out some buckets and containers when it rains, and I use that with my house plants. You can also look into installing a rainwater barrel, which is a great way to collect water for your house plants and for your garden, and it's also amazing for the environment as well as it lessens the storm water runoffs into our drainage. Many cities and counties around the U.S. also have a rain check program which provide rebates and tax incentives for homeowners who do install a rain barrel in their house. So you might want to look into that and see if your local counties or municipality have such a program and see how you could avail those benefits if you do install a rainwater barrel. But collecting rainwater is not always easy or possible for us depending on where we live. So again, tap water is fine for most of us to use on our house plants. However, if you want to take the extra step and you want to give your plants a little bit of a treat, then here are some amendments that you can do to your regular tap water. First is changing the pH level of our water. Most of our tap water would be either neutral or a little bit alkaline. I doubt that it will be acidic because that would corrode our pipes. And our house plants prefer a slightly acidic water, which is pH 5.5. To 6.5. This pH level in water and in the soil allows the plants to absorb the nutrients a lot better 
and if the pH of the soil and the water is high, it can prevent the plant from accessing those nutrients from the soil even though we water and fertilize our plants regularly. To test the pH level of your water, you can buy a pH test kit. I got mine for $8 from True Leaf Market, but you can get it on Amazon as well. The price do vary from $8 to $15. I suggest no paying more than that. And sometimes it does come with the pH up and pH down solution for added price. I don't recommend buying the pH up and pH down solution because you don't really need them. If you have lemon juice or distilled white vinegar in your kitchen, that's all you need to bring down the pH level of your water. And like I said, most of our tap water is either neutral or alkaline. So more often than not, you'll need to bring down the pH of your water. And you can do that by just using lemon juice or distilled white vinegar and you need very little of it. Like my water is already at pH 7, which is neutral. So I only need about a quarter teaspoon to half a teaspoon of lemon juice or distilled white vinegar in a gallon of water to bring it down to pH 5.5 or pH 6. And if for some reason you accidentally brought the pH down way too low, the way to bring it up is to dilute it with more water and the pH level would go up. So you don't really need the pH down and pH up solution. That's just a waste of money in my opinion. Just go and buy the pH test kit. Other amendments that you can add to your water is of course nutrients and liquid fertilizers. I have a whole video on fertilizing your house plants. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go check it out. Link is up here and also down in the description. So nutrients and fertilizer are different, but the same. Nutrients tend to be a lot less potent because it's often used on hydroponics and semi-hydroponics. So they can't be too strong or otherwise it would burn the roots of the plants. So if you're into semi-hydroponics or hydroponics, then you're very familiar with nutrient water already. I myself use nutrient water because I do have some plants that are in semi-hydro that I planted with LECA or with perlite and I also use it for my propagations. And nutrient water is when we add a nutrient solution into our regular tap water and right now the one that I am using is Super Thrive and I know some people who are into LECA or semi-hydro will not consider that as a nutrient but Sewer Thrive basically turns your regular water into vitamin water for your house plants. And I know there are other proper nutrients out there that's being used for semi-hydro, but I don't use them right now, so I can't mention or recommend any. But I use the Super Thrive water or the vitamin water on my plants, not just in Leica, but also those in soil because we are currently transitioning into the dormancy period in the cold season for our house plants and I'm trying to wean my plants off fertilizer so I'm using the vitamin water as sort of a transition for my plants because the Super Thrive largely help with shock transplant especially for the plants that I just recently transplanted plants that I have in propagation or plants that you might have recently received in mail giving them vitamin water will help them adjust a bit more smoothly than just using your regular tap water. Other water amendments that I have used in the past is adding Epsom salt to my regular tap water. I usually add about a tablespoon of Epsom salt to a gallon of water and Epsom salt contains magnesium which helps with better absorption of nutrients for your houseplants. And speaking of propagations, many use a rooting hormone powder to help with their propagation, but I recently discovered this solution, which is the Root and Grow by Bonide, which contains the same ingredients as the rooting hormone powder, but it also has a NPK ratio of 4, 10, and 3, which makes sense because phosphorus is what is needed for plants for root development and root growth. And it is a little bit higher than I would use for my house plants because I think the solution is mainly targeted for trees and shrubs and vegetables, even though it did say that it's also for house plants. But to be safe, I do cut down the recommended dosage from three tablespoons to a gallon of water to just a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half to a gallon of water. And that's what I use for my propagations whether they're water propagating or propagating in moss or whatever medium that I'm currently using to propagate my plants. And it's really a lifesaver, especially for some of my plants that 
I've been having a hard time propagating. Once I started using that, it kind of helped with the propagation process a bit more, but of course there are other factors involved in successful propagation as well, not just the type of nutrient or water that you use. But I do think it is helping with the stuff that I'm currently propagating right now. So these amendments are very much optional and completely unnecessary. Like I mentioned earlier, there are only two things that your plant needs in order to survive and thrive. That is light and water. Everything else is just bonus and extra. Master the when and how of watering your plants first, and then you go and experiment with different types of water and water amendments as you go along. The key with plant care is consistency. We don't want to keep changing up the product that we use, the watering schedule and the watering techniques on our house plants and we only make adjustments as needed. That's the key word. We make adjustments as needed, not because something is new and trendy and we wanna try it on our plants. And if we are going to try something new on our house plants, especially when it involves watering, then we should always perform a test first before we use it fully on all of our house plants because instead of helping of our house plants, we could end up killing them accidentally. Your plants are not gonna react the same to whatever nutrient or amendment that you would introduce to them or the type of water that you use on them. So you just have to be very mindful and careful with that. Some would like it, some would hate it, some would die because of it. So just be very careful. Plants would wilt when they are watered with salt water or watered with too much fertilizer or nutrients because since the soil around the roots becomes hypertonic. Whatever nutrients you use, also pay attention to the level of sodium. For example, Epsom salt, it is magnesium sulfate. It doesn't contain sodium chloride, so it doesn't have any salt, but you have to, but some fertilizers and some nutrients actually do have a significant amount of sodium. So make sure you read the label of the nutrient and the fertilizer before you purchase them. And even then, you still have to be careful with how much and how often you use them on your plants. Just because something is good for your plants doesn't mean an abundance of them is great for your plants. And if you're new to my channel and you're just watching me today, I have an entire series on houseplants back to basics where we cover everything from light, soil, fertilizers, diagnosing yellowing leaves and such. It's a complete series that's perfect for new plant parents. It's everything you need to know on how to take care of your house plants as we head towards the winter season and also how to take care of your plants during the growing season. So I highly recommend to watch this series. If you haven't yet, the playlist will be up here and also down in the description as well as the individual episodes if you're just looking for something specific. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I hope you subscribe. I come up with houseplants and sustainable lifestyle videos every week. And if you haven't yet, go check out these videos up here. Until my next one, but until then, I see you, I appreciate you, take care of yourself and each other, and have a plentiful day. Bye!